when I first fell in love with football, it was in the very early 70s, 1972. That's the first football game. And it wasn't the first game I watched, but it was the first football game of note that I can I can remember watching. I had a friend, uh, 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 Jack Jones, and his name will become relevant because I'm going to talk about his brother in a second. But I remember he liked the Rams, and I liked George Allen in Washington and uh, for different reasons. And uh, he wasn't from Los Angeles. I wasn't from Washington, D.C., but uh, we didn't have a local team. The Seahawks weren't born until like the mid-'70s. And so you watch the big brands. And back then, uh, it was Don Shula's Dolphins. Um, it was Chuck Knoll, stoic Chuck Knoll and the Steelers. And in the early 70s, um, Dolphins won in 72, the first game I ever watched against Billy Kilmore in Washington and George Allen. And uh, and then it was John Madden's Steeler, uh, uh, Raiders. And it's fascinating because um, when you're hearing people talk about John Madden, it's very unique that you can be relevant in multiple industries for 40 to 50 years. His relevance is unmatched, absolutely unmatched. Um, John was a legendary coach in the 70s, an amazing broadcaster in the 80s, 90s, a, a, a game tech game pioneer after that. And uh, to the very last year of his life, network executives, coaches were calling him in Pleasanton, California to pick his brain. There's a lot about John you do know, but uh, and there's a lot you don't know, but people are struck by his size, um, his comedic timing. Uh, what really gets me about Madden. Um, he was way smarter than anybody gives him credit for. So John, everybody cares how people view them. Um, John leaned into what he was. Like he really understood he was big and loud and fun and he leaned right into it. But he was really intelligent. Um, I, the only person I can think of who has been part of our social fabric for that long is like Oprah who's the only broadcaster in my life that owns her own network. Um, but the Raider teams were fascinating. And I know I'm probably only talking to people here who are in their 50s. So if you're in your 20s and 30s, I'm just going to kind of explain what it was like being in the 70s and watching the NFL. You had the probably the greatest team ever assembled, the Steelers. And the Dolphins and the Raiders were an inch below them. Um, the Raiders are so unbelievably memorable because there's never been a team that matched their coach. I can name almost every Raider. They were perfectly constructed. The speed receiver, Cliff Branch. The hands receiver, Fred Bolitnikoff. The tight end that could block and run, Dave Casper. The offensive line left to right was Jim Otto, Hall of Famer. Gene Upshaw, Hall of Famer. Art Shell, Hall of Famer. Mark Van Egan was the running back. The defense was similarly brilliantly constructed. The playmaking linebacker, Phil Villapiano. The, the pass rusher, Ted Hendricks, the stork. Uh, the, 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 the tough interior lineman, John Matuzak. That head-hunting safety at the time that was allowed, Jack Tatum. Willie Brown, the corner, joined later by Lester Hayes and the Stickham. And you have to be really smart to be part of an organization that is perfectly constructed. But another sign of the intelligence of Madden was his simplicity. So years ago, I'm rambling here, I got a broadcasting job out of college in Las Vegas. And I remember I would go to these minor league ballparks and in the clubhouses. And one time I was in Phoenix, and I remember the manager's name, but I'm not going to say it. And he had his rules on the door, and there must have been 25 rules. And I remember thinking, man, if I, if I was ever like a boss, I would have very few rules because I couldn't remember all his rules. And John Madden had three. And John Madden, as a former player, understood the fewer rules, the faster players play. Show up on time, listen, and play your butt off Sunday. That was it. That is brilliant. 
everybody's got rules and politicians are all layered. John, if you're a politician today, you should watch John Madden. He would connect with everybody, but was better than nobody. And it was all about simplicity. When you think of Madden, you just think big and rough and physical. But what you don't ever hear people talk about is how damn smart he was. He had the football integrity and intensity of Mike Tomlin, uh, the relatability and the ability to adapt like uh, Andy Reid, the brain power of Belichick, the love for power football like Kyle Shanahan. And like many legends, he was a combination of many things. And like all legends, there was nobody else like him. He made TV better. He made football better. He gave credit to people, linemen that nobody talked about. And he was completely authentic. Um, often duplicated, uh, often imitated, never duplicated. But I thought about this morning what to talk about. And, you know, people that knew John much greater than me, I only interviewed him one time. Uh, he briefly coached 15 minute drive from my house. And I had him live on the air. He had a mind like a steel trap. And this had happened 40 years earlier. And I said, John, I grew up right next to Grays Harbor Community College. And he goes, the Chokers. No, that was the name of the team, the Chokers. Uh, and he went on for five minutes. He knew streets. He knew times. He knew dates. Uh, a steel trap. But I hope it's not lost in all of this how smart John was to be a great coach and then a network altering broadcaster and then a brilliant businessman in Pleasanton, California, and then a pioneer in video games. And then at the very end, Eric Shanks, our boss, would regularly, regularly, could have been weekly, maybe it's monthly, certainly more than annually, be on the phone with Madden, asking questions about football. What would you do? What do you make of that? What do you make of this person? What would you do in this situation? You see this big, loud, funny guy who used to go on Letterman. To be that relevant and to be that respected, you have to be so on top of it and so smart. And when I think of John, I think of intensity, I think of integrity, and I think of intelligence. Um if you did not see those teams play, those players, you would think having a cast of characters would be a would be a team that was hard to galvanize, right? They all had big personalities. Uh, Kenny Stabler had a big personality, and Matuzak, and Villapiano, and Hendricks, and Lester Hayes, and Jack Tatum you would think this would be an incredibly hard team to get your arms around and coach. But no, John as a former player was respected by players and perhaps the greatest respect you can pay as a boss or a coach. Very few rules. Show up on time, listen, and work really hard. And that was him. Madden made complicated things incredibly embraceable and simple. And everybody out there on social media is trying to show you how smart they are. I know this. I'm an epidemiologist. <laughs> I'm a politician. I'm a legislator. Madden never worried about that. It was about football. If you played it, if you loved it, if you coached it, if you talked about it, if you broadcast it, John had an influence on your life. One of the smartest human beings the NFL has ever had. Don't let that get lost. You cannot be that relevant that many ways, that many decades without massive brain power. Rest in peace. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.